Hi, I'm Scott, and today I'm going to show you a little bit about the GateGuard wireless access control system from Rytron. The standard GateGuard kit includes three primary components. A radio call box that's typically located at gates or locked access points. A portable handheld radio for monitoring and controlling the gate on the move. And a desktop base station radio that can be used for monitoring and control from a security office or other desk. Power supplies and charging accessories are also included in the kit. So now that we know what's included with a complete kit, let's take a look at each individual component and understand the three elements that go into how each one is programmed. First is the frequency, or the frequency code. This is the actual frequency that the radios are all operating on. The second component is the tone code, also known as the interference eliminator code. The third is the two-tone paging code. These are the actual tones that you hear transmitted over the radio to the call box that trigger the gate release. The gate guard package comes with everything pre-programmed together to work right out of the box. On the VHF side, the defaults are frequency code 19, tone code 12, two-tone 98. In this example, I'm an end user who just recently purchased a complete gate guard system. In addition to that, I also purchased a secondary call box because I have two gates at my facility. I'll now show you the process of programming the system to work with the two gate setup. Since all of the equipment is pre-programmed to work together on channel 1, in order to program the second call box, we'll have to set it to a different frequency and tone combination so that we can control it independently from the first. As you can see, I've taken the liberty to already open up the call box using the included security torx bit. I've installed six D-cell batteries and I'm ready to program. So we'll start out by putting it into programming mode, and we first need to press the stainless steel button on the front to make sure it's on and awake. We then press and hold the programming button until it stops beeping. We have a dash on the display so we know we're in programming mode. The first value that we're going to enter in is the new frequency code. For this instance, we're going to use frequency code 20. So we'll enter each digit one value at a time. The first number is a 2, we'll press the programming button two times. We hear the beep, that means it's ready for the next value. The next one's a 0, we'll press it 10 times for a 0. The next value we're going to look at is the tone code, and that was a tone code of 11 we'll use in this instance. So we enter a 1, and a 1 again. Then we press the stainless steel button to save it. The next thing that we'll tell it is that we want to do the gate guard momentary. And the manual will tell you that that code is 814. We'll put in the 8, then a 1, and a 4. And again, we press the stainless steel button to save. The last thing that we enter is the tone, uh, two-tone code, and that is 99. So again, we'll press the programming button nine times, and nine once more. And again, the stainless steel to save. Again, we'll press the stainless steel to take it out of programming mode, and once more to return it to normal operation. To confirm the programming, we can press the program button once more and it'll flash out the numbers that we just loaded in. Two zero one one C nine nine, just like I put it. So now that we have the call box programmed, we're going to go into both the base station and the portable handheld radio and program channel two to match. So we start out by putting the radio into programming mode. And to do that, we press and hold the push to talk button while also turning the radio on. Once it's done beeping, we release. And once we have the dash on the display, we're in programming mode. We'll go to channel 2. And then we'll begin entering our values. The first letter that we'll see come up is an F for frequency. And we'll put our frequency of 20 in. 2 and 10 times for a 0. 
press the on button to save. Now we're going to look for a lowercase b for our subtone. And the value for that is 11. And again the on button to save. Lastly we'll program the two-tone code. That's going to be the letter C. And then 99. on to save. And then we can press the on again to read back to confirm. And now we'll do the same for the JMX radio. We'll start by putting it into programming mode by pressing and holding the push to talk on the side and turning the radio on. When we see the dash, we know we're in programming mode. We'll hit channel select to go to channel 2, and we'll enter our values. First, the frequency code 20. And then the tone code 11. Press the on button to save. And then now we'll do our two-tone code, 99. And once more, on to save. And we can press the on button again to verify. So now that everything's programmed to work together, do a simple radio check to make sure that everything communicates. You'll also want to go ahead and double check the two-tone to make sure that it uh, triggers the gate release as well. On the portable radio, you press and hold the channel select button. And on the base station, you'll press the Z key. Both should trigger the two-tone pairs to send to the call box, and you should get the relay to click, and then also hear confirmation tones back from the call box, identifying that it's done its job. Hope this information was helpful for you. If you should have additional questions, please reference the quick start guide included with the system. You can also find our complete listing of user manuals at Rytron.com.